When it comes to micronutrients, one micronutrient is quite a bit different than the others. It's boron. It's actually an anion, so it has a negative charge, which means it can leach down through the soil much like nitrate can. Well, I don't know if I go quite that far. It's not going to leach at nearly as quickly as what nitrate will. So I kind of think of it more like sulfate. So it is going to leach. You do need to apply it every year for pretty much every crop in most cases. Uh, just understand with boron, we've got to have some boron out there and I know it doesn't take a whole lot. You can look on the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, you can look up any crop, even high yield goals and you say, what? I only need a tenth of a pound for a whole acre for a year? Why are you guys even talking about it? Well, that's what we want to get into today. All right, so when you think about boron, uh, we probably don't think very much, right? Uh, well, gosh, that isn't a, a big nutrient for me. I think about N, P, K, and maybe sulfur. Those are the big ones that I'm applying, and maybe I'll use a blended micronutrient product. Okay, why are you doing that, and, and why do we need this boron? It's so critical for many things. Let's talk about soybeans to begin with. And I realize soybean fertility, you're probably like, well, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm going to rely on carryover fertilizer for my corn. If you're thinking that way, please, please soil test before you plant soybeans next spring. Uh, this is a critical thing. We have to have good fertility to have high yielding soybeans. And one of those nutrients that we need just a little bit of is boron. And one of the things that we saw this year across, or this past summer, I should say, across many farms was, hey, I didn't have as good an odulation as I wanted. Was my inoculant not good or what was going on? And one of the things that we saw short in those fields was boron. If you're short in boron, it's really hard to have good nodulation in soybeans. And when you think about how much nitrogen those nodules produce for the beans, it's absolutely critical for yield that we have our boron. All right, so Darren's talking about soybeans. I really think of this as a corn nutrient. It's incredibly important for corn, for pollination, for helping fill out the ear. Even for, for example, if you have shriveled kernels, that basically equals, hey, I've got a problem with my boron levels. You can have better nitrogen utilization. It's just so important for that plant. Again, I realize we don't need a whole lot. So here's what we're looking for. We want you to soil test. Make sure you're testing for micronutrients. And on a Midwest Labs test, so every, every lab does it a little different extraction. We'll talk Midwest Labs because that's the one we use. 1.2 to 3.0 parts per million for boron. That's kind of what we're looking for. And I'll just say, hey, this last year we had a lot of these high yield corn, soybean and wheat farmers on our own farm with plots. And that was one of the things that stood out to me. A lot of the guys were talking about, we got to get the boron levels up. So I just look at our own farm. We've got insufficient levels of boron. We're putting more boron out there. Yes, we're still doing a blended micronutrient at planting time. It's got a tiny rate of boron in, but we're broadcasting a bunch of boron. Boron will move down in the soil. We want to get our overall levels up. So yes, we can't get too carried away. You got to be a little concerned about boron. We have to have decent calcium levels uh, in the soil before you ever start putting a whole bunch of boron on. And by a whole bunch, I mean a couple of pounds. It's no real... That's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You have to be very careful. When we're yeah. talking about micronutrients, we are talking about small quantities. It doesn't take a lot and it doesn't cost a huge amount of money in most cases to get our micronutrient levels in line. Now, certainly, as, as Brian just mentioned, we need to have calcium in line. We need to have the N, P, and K in line. That's true. But to add just a couple of pounds of boron, it's not going to break your budget okay. and it's not, not going to be a difficult yeah, thing but, to accomplish. But here's the thing. If you've got light soils, like we said, this is leachable. It's not going to stay around forever. So a lot of people do a fair amount of foliar feeding of boron. A lot of these high yield guys going for bigger yields, especially with that corn. Foliar feeding, just very low rates of boron can be very helpful when you're doing some other foliar feeding. You're throwing some nitrogen out, sulfur out, those kind of things. Throw just a tiny amount of boron in. But like we say, every year I'd be thinking about boron and I don't care what crop you're raising. The reason why is it's important to have some boron out there for pollination, for a, min a number of different things in that crop, and it does move through the soil. So it's not gonna stick around forever. So when you're thinking about your fertility program for this season, don't forget about boron. It's very critical for a number of things going on, both in corn and in soybeans, as well as in other crops too. Well, another thing that's incredibly important is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up next. <music> 